let's talk about family. So uh, what do you call it? Ivanka and Jared getting subpoenaed. Who's throwing who under the bus and when is your prediction? Yeah, they're all going to throw each other. You know, it'll be a circular <laughs> firing squad because they're a den of vipers. That's why I just said that last thing, you know, like how they're not looking out for each other in terms of their personal health. It's going to be the same thing in terms of their legal standing. And none of them trust each other. Jared yeah. never trusted Trump. Chris Christie obviously threw Jared's father in jail with some compromise that he most likely got from Trump's associates, right? Oh, they had videotape of him. So not... Not just the videotape that that Jared's father got on his brother-in-law, yeah. but there was videotape on, you know, Charles Kushner and, and stepping out with prostitutes and all this stuff. And that's why he took the plea deal. Right. Yeah. So Jared knows all that. Hates Chris Christie. Doesn't trust Trump. Ivanka had a front row seat to all the crime. And, you know, she was the face of the Trump organization in all these years that A.G. Letitia James right. is investigating, right? All right. the sort of false financial documents and BS. So I think they'll very quickly turn each other when they see how much teeth the Georgia, you know, yeah. investigates an impossible trial has. I think that'll be when they really start to lawyer up and, and, and figure out strategies to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't. Oh, I think Trump accidentally gave uh, Jack Smith a, a kind of a super cool nickname. Didn't call him Mad Dog something. Mad Dog. <laughs> Psycho Mad Dog. Jack yeah. Smith. You're like, ooh, that's. <laughs> that's right. pretty, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I want to be called Mad Dog. Exactly. <laughs> um. So you you just mentioned video. Uh, you uh, tweeted uh, 40,000 hours is a lot of footage. This will be Tucker's apocalypse now, except it's cast with angry power washers from New Hampshire and the grill teams of the Mid-Atlantic Fuddruckers. <laughs> all fighting to protect a bald diapered madman who snor snorts Adderall and lives in Palm Beach. I mean, at, you said J6 was probably the first insurrection where most of the enemy combatants stopped at Dunkin' Donuts the morning of their battle. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's like it is funny, except that, you know, who knows what how Tucker is going to filter this. Right. I mean, it's just he's a, he's a noted uh, proven liar. Right and conspiracy theorist about J6. What is your take on what, what, he, what he's going to try to do with this? I think it's dangerous because they are going to make a propaganda film. You know, it, it's going to be rewriting history and making it palatable for the Fox News viewers, right? Because mm -hmm. we learned last week yeah. they're making a ton of money off of the Stop the Steal election lies, right? That right. was released in these text messages between Tucker Carlson and everybody. Right. So that's their product is keeping the big lie alive. And I think they'll they'll edit something that makes it look like Antifa you know, was causing it, mysterious right. figures, and that the MAGA guys were just there to, you know, repair the tile work or something on the, you know, like they're going to make themselves up, appear to be the good guys. And that's the, that's the kernel of this whole scam is, right. is that they're appealing to the, the worst instincts in people, but telling them they're right. Mm -hmm. They're on the right side of history. And that's a dangerous yeah. thing. And or it'll be like, five seconds long and just the guy walking in the rope line <laughs> just right, that's exactly, the only footage exactly. they can find that looks yeah exactly yeah but i think the larger point if i can just add is yeah. that we've never had a speaker of the house willing to turn over sensitive congressional you know property essentially yeah. which was what that videotape is to a private network you know yeah. to a propaganda network owned by an australian billionaire who clearly doesn't have democracy yeah. you know yeah. at the top of his list so that you know that's made the republican party a financial arm of of basically fox corp in yeah my opinion. yeah um, also, leave it to you to stand up for men everywhere that have been tasered in the balls. And I think that is, <laughs> you said, I feel like releasing the footage is disrespectful to the guy who tasered himself in the balls, trying to stop the certification of votes from a free and fair election while his friends use the United States Capitol like a porta potty. Um, <laughs> people don't stand up for that guy enough. No. Exactly. You know, and then that, that's the ludicrousness of this situation. There's no way you can paint this any other way than you guys are monsters. And what you did was beyond the pale yeah. in terms of anything we've ever seen before. And the fact that we're two years out from it and it is being normalized should terrify. You. Yeah. And they are traitors. This talk of, uh, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about a national divorce and a civil war. Um, I You made the best point I've seen on Twitter. You said uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene reminds me of an oily piece of spam that somebody trained to bark. <laughs> 
not. That's a good. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's as good a, a description as, that, as I've seen. Yeah. Uh huh. Barking spam. Um. And also, you made the point we've been making all week. I want a divorce, says Marjorie Taylor Greene of red states, blue states, conveniently leaving out who actually pays the bills for the red states. I mean, it is endlessly ironic, isn't it, that they call us socialists and we are all the giver states and they are all the taker states. They would completely collapse without tax money from the blue states, right? A hundred percent. From California alone, right? Just if California decided to put massive tariffs on produce right they wouldn't last a week right you couldn't get an avocado or a head of lettuce for less than 10 bucks and they would fold you know and that's why we're the united states a house divided cannot stand as lincoln famously said like we're in this together we only we work best when we all come together and i think the ultimate sort of philosophical political crime of these trump years is that he spawned so many politicians willing to divide us for their own grift yeah, you know, that that that's a shameless thing. Yeah. It's you know, it, it maddens me daily. Yeah. I suppose we I mean, again, I am of the Trump is going to be indicted and is going to go to prison camp because I need that to live. But <laughs> <laughs> I do think that I just love this I, that he is in his own prison. I love this story. Uh, the former president now has a regular gig as a DJ at Mar-a-Lago. I mean, he is just. On Thursday he night, not just even a, a good sad, night. Not even a good night. Just a sad, pathetic little man. Thursday. <laughs> um, this is, uh, where is this from? Page six says, Trump is officially DJing every Thursday night. He sits at a table with an iPad where he lines up tunes such as Celine Dion's hit song from Titanic while he eats. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If a man, that... if this man is is never actually going to be in jail for various crimes, the next best thing is just for him to stay put in that soothing Groundhog, Groundhog Day time loop, utterly content with his Thursday night DJ gigs, un- unable to up geopolitics, said Jezebel. <laughs> Jill Twist said, the one thing I hold dear is that all of the worst people you know will eventually try to become a DJ. That's As hilarious. a former DJ, I can confirm we are the worst. <laughs> we are the worst. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, it is that Norma Desmond thing. He is in his own prison. Can I tell you a quick story? One of the the images that sums up Trump best for me in my time working around that family, the last several years we shot at the Museum of Natural History in New York. That's where we shot the Celebrity Apprentice finales in the LaFrac studio. So we had the after party essentially across the hall, right? And the after party was like, whoever was on the show it wasn't you know it wasn't jay-z and beyonce showing up you know it wasn't like madonna it wasn't a big a-list affair and trump would wait out in the hallway like 20 minutes into the after party starting and i went out there one time and i was like what are you guys waiting for and they're like we're waiting for all the celebrities to get here to make an entrance and i'm like celebrities it's tom green you know (laughs) and just like and we just saw you 20 minutes ago across the hall. Like, nobody's going to be surprised. It's a bunch of grips and PAs and your audience. But he <laughs> would stand out there lonely. Oh, you know, God. you could see, like, the need for oh, attention. So pathetic. Yeah. 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 It, it was just nuts. And yeah. then he would walk in with his security guys like he was president even back then. Oh, you know. He, he By the way, crazy. and I speak as a pathetic former DJ. You, you know, you remember my favorite story, Chris. Back when I was a DJ, the uh, uh, Sister Sleeves from the Brother We Was Born in Circus, everybody, WCMF Rochester. Uh-huh. I used to, I took DJ gigs, you know, for extra money, and I would, I remember I, I would only play songs from the Bad Animals Heart thing because I'd just gone through a breakup. So I would just, it was, I was like the worst DJ ever. You can't even dance to it, but it's, that that's him. He's, a, I'm just saying I am a sad, pathetic former DJ, and that's, but I wasn't president, you know, this is even true. by accident. Thank God. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Chef Shanti, and today in the Organic Kitchen, I'm going to be showing you how to make my favorite breakfast burrito. 